Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the search for MH370. I'm Geoffrey Thomas, and delighted to say once again joined by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. Good afternoon to you, Richard. And good evening to you, Geoffrey. Thank you. Viewers, this episode is a martyr underway, finally. It's episode 303. Amada 8605 is now underway to the search area after spending several days, firstly off Rottnest Island, just uh, to the west of Perth, before moving south off Mandra, Western Australia, and spending about 24 hours in possible training exercises with its AUVs. It is now headed south uh, west, or in fact west southwest, on a course of 256.1 true at a speed of 6.2 knots uh, into 3.6 metre, which is about 12 foot seas. Richard, can you give us an update on that uh, for us, please? Yeah, sure. We're showing a screenshot of the current uh, position of Amada 8605. As we reported last time, it left uh, Fremantle on the 23rd of December and has um, made two stops, but is now underway to the MH370 search area. O Ocean Infinity is uh, currently on course to reach the point where Amada 7806 left off on the 28th of March uh, 2025, earlier this year. And uh, the first stop was, uh, as Geoffrey mentioned, off Rottnest Island, and that was an overnight stop of 16 hours, 40 minutes. And then showing another screenshot of the next stop, which was, uh, we believe, an AUV exercise. And that uh, second stop was for 30 hours, 27 minutes. And it was off the continental shelf uh, in waters with a depth starting at 670 metres and going down to over 3,000 metres. The weather en route is pretty windy with high waves, uh, as we mentioned. There is a tropical cyclone called Grant, which has reached Storm Force 10, uh, but that is much further north and moving away westwards. And we expect the weather to improve in the coming days in the MH370 search uh, area. So, Richard, now we've got some uh, interesting comments and questions. Let's start off with Geoffrey from Hungary. Hi, gentlemen. Great to see you both. And OI starts searching for MH370 again. If OI will search the full Whisper area, then MH370 will be found in 2026. I think we'll agree with that. Um, <laughs> I am an information technology engineer for 21 years now, and I am pretty amazed by Whisper and Richard's genius capabilities to understand deeply and squeeze information from those, from those data connecting to MH370. And yes, I think all the teams, groups who are dedicated to find the plane individually should receive an award um, from, for example, the Malaysian government after finding MH370. Richard, uh, Jeffrey and Blaine as well, of course. These people, including you, keeping alive the search with your dedication. My best bet is the Whisper area, as I mentioned before, because for me, technically, it gives us the most engineering facts about the plane's last position. Merry Christmas to you all and the other viewers as well. Best results from Hungary. Richard, a nice comment. Yes, a very nice comment and appreciate it. And... Uh... I must say thank you, too, to all the viewers who sent in Christmas uh, wishes. Mm. Uh, Ocean and Fidity are headed back to the area uh, where they left off in March of this year. Um, that area, they started the systematic search uh, wider of the seventh arc than previously. 
And I expect them to continue that s systematic uh, search. And they started in the Blely Marchand area, moving northeastwards along the seventh arc, but 20 nautical miles further east of the arc than previously. And they will be heading first uh, towards the IG Yanalo Ulich uh, search area. Mm. Another interesting observation comes from Pavasi24, who states, It's incredible hearing that it'll take four days to get this to the search area. Being a Perth boy and being on a P&O cruise that went from Bali to Perth on its last leg, it just puts so much context as to how much further out that the Seventh Ark is. I did wonder for many nights on end going up and down the Indian Ocean as to how far from the coast of WA the area is. Safe to say we didn't even get close on the Pacific Explorer. Thanks for shedding some light as to how far away from the port of Frio, Fremantle, the area is. Now, Richard, I've flown over the Indian Ocean many times and like the uh, Pacific, it is a vast ocean that seems to go on forever. Yeah, it uh, sure is. And, uh, of course, if you fly over it, you're, you're over in, uh, in a number of hours. If you're on a cruise ship, mm. uh, then it takes a lot longer and you get <laughs> the detail uh, in front of you with the waves and, uh, uh, and the winds. The um, ship mentioned the Pacific Explorer is the new name for the what used to be called the Seabed Constructor. And that was the ship used by Ocean Infinity back in 2018. So the Indian Ocean is 70 million square kilometers. And uh, what we've done with Whisper is narrowed that down to a MH370 search area of 2,800 square kilometers, which is a lot less than 70 million. Ocean Infinity have listened to all the experts and are planning 55 days with three AUVs, and they'll be covering an area of around 37,000 square kilometers in that time. And Ocean Infinity are heading to the IG area currently. Uh, this is 1,846 kilometres from their present position off the coast of Australia and 2,073 kilometres from Fremantle. Mm. Now, here's an interesting one from Rig Rig 86 cc who asks... How is the UWA team able to identify two specific hotspots? I would think that drift analysis would point to big areas, but not to precise locations due to the inaccuracies involved. Good luck to OI. Now, Richard, I think Professor Chari was not exactly keen on identifying hotspots, um, but termed it more likely a, a, a more likely spot. But I think Blaine was very keen on Broken Ridge, which was one of the hotspots. Yeah. Now, Professor Charita Patiarachi did a study together with his colleague from the University of Western Australia, a guy called Ems uh, Vijaratni, if I pronounce that correctly. They defined 25 locations along the seventh arc and at each location, they simulated 50,000 items of debris and tracked them with their oceanographic model for 24 months. And the best fit to the arrival of the Flapperon in Reunion Island on the 29th of July 2015 were between their locations 11 and 18. And this defines the UWA search area, which we're now showing on the screen. 
in a private email from Professor Charita Patiarachi, dated the 28th of March 2018, he stated, and I quote, UWA modeling indicated that the most likely crash site was between 33 degrees south and 28.5 degrees south, with a preference to the southern section of this range. However, there is another hot spot around 29.75 degrees south that could also fit into the frame. He went on to explain there are actually two UWA hotspots within the UWA area, which are the ones we marked uh, on the map. The first one, UWA hotspot number one, at the southern end around Broken Ridge at uh, 32.5 degrees south, 96 degrees east, and this is the one favoured by Blaine Gibson. And secondly, there's a UWA hotspot number two at the northern end, close to the Whisper area, at around 29.75 degrees south, 85 uh, degrees east, which is actually the one favoured by Professor Patiarachi himself. Mm. And with these 50,000 debris items in s simulation from each location, you can count the number that actually arrive in Réunion by the 29th of July, and that's what makes him favour one hotspot or a second hotspot over above uh, other points in the whole UWA area. Hmm. Now, here's another interesting question from Rocket R8, who asks, Happy holidays, gentlemen. Question, if MH370 is found outside the designated search areas, does the fee still apply? Malaysia seems to be specific as to the search areas and the time frame that the search is constrained to. If they really wanted the plane to be found, it should be searched at will as long as you are willing with a fee paid on success. That's an interesting comment. It is. And, of course, I do not know the exact wording of the contract signed between Malaysia and Ocean Infinity. I only know what has been publicly announced by the Malaysian authorities and the MH370 families. But I cannot imagine that if Ocean Infinity find MH370 outside the originally proposed area or outside the currently agreed area or time frame, that they will uh, turn around in Malaysia and say, sorry, the 70 million is not payable. Um, on, on the contrary, I think they'll be very pleased. And if Ocean Infinity provides evidence of the find and the black boxes and the uh, identification of the main wreckage site and even manages to retrieve certain items of wreckage, this will go a long way to solving this mystery, and I expect the Malaysian authorities will be very pleased after almost 12 years to solve this case. Yeah. So, Gracie, 289, superb ending to a stunning year of airline news. Thanks go out to Jeffrey, Richard and Blaine and everyone associated with Airline News for keeping us all informed and educating us along the way. Happy holidays and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. MH370 will be found in 26. All thanks to your hard work and dedication to the truth, which is still out there to be found. Gracie always comes along with a really good comment, Richard. Yeah, she does. And... Uh... I'm absolutely sure that uh, MH370 will be found as sooner or later. And let's hope in 2026 we have something to celebrate in that respect. Although, of course, it's a huge tragedy for the families and we must be mindful of them uh, at that difficult moment when MH370 is actually found. Mm -hmm. Indeed. 
And here are some nice comments that reflect the overwhelming thoughts on the channel for the festive season. Be joyful. Merry Christmas to Richard Jeffrey and all fellow subscribers who wonderfully contribute and share here. Uh, Vog, if full, of great footage and great commentary. I wish all the best for all involved and to you guys. Jeff Daniel, um, 1814, great update. Thank you. Merry Christmas to both of you and your families, as well as to all the viewers of the channel. And while I agree we all should take a few days off, Richard and Jeffrey, you really do deserve a break, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar as dedicated viewers will be checking in every single day just in case. Richard. Yeah. Well, Jeffrey, it's always good to check just in case because uh, Daily Airline News is committed to bringing you breaking news as it happens. And uh, I must say, if anything did come up, we would be uh, doing an episode at short notice. Yeah, I've spent my Christmas uh, preparing for my new channel, um, which will accompany daily airline news, but uh, less frequently and not as it happens. It will wait until an in-depth analysis uh, can be done uh, and it'll focus on independent aircraft investigations. Mm, looking forward to that. So, Richard, finally, we've got this lovely summary of good wishes from Harold, uh, Charlie One Quebec Nine Whiskey. Thank you for giving me a chance to catch up on some old episodes of different aircraft incidents that I have otherwise missed because they were aired before I started watching this wonderful channel. As you already know, I live in California, so this channel is the highlight of my morning. So I'll be catching up uh, every morning. Whatever your faith, bless you, the readers, listeners, viewers, and all those people that it takes to make this happen. Merry Christmas, Happy Kanoza, Fili Vanda, and Happy Hanukkah. Please keep safe. And I'm sure I've messed up a couple of those pronunciations, and I do apologise. Richard. <laughs> Yeah, we're a, a global uh, community. Yeah. And, and, and all I can say to Harold is, Muchas gracias y feliz Navidad, Harold. And um, I would say it in my language, Ich wünsche dich in dein Leben ein schöner und besinnlicher Weihnachtszeit. Yes, well said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, happy Christmas. Is, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Christmas Day here, for those who would like to know, uh, was 42 degrees Celsius. So it was a bit of a challenge. It's much, much cooler today, which is wonderful. So uh, we did have a very hot day. One of, it was almost a record for this part of well, the world. At 42 degrees C, I would be living in the swimming pool. Yes. And, uh, and I don't think I'd even get out of the swimming pool to go to the cocktail bar. <laughs> yeah. So, viewers, thank you very much indeed for watching us today. And, Richard, thank you very much indeed for uh, giving us the update on Armada and for answering those questions. You're welcome. And, viewers, we are planning something special. Now, I can't give you any details. Hopefully, we'll be back maybe tomorrow or definitely on Sunday um, with uh, a, a new episode. And I'll just we'll just keep that mum as to what that's going to be. But uh, rest assured, we'll also be following Amada um, 8605 and giving you an update. It may just be a short episode, but we'll certainly be on the case. So please subscribe to us. Please like us. Please keep those wonderful comments and questions coming. We really do appreciate them. And uh, we look forward to your company uh, very shortly. Thank you very much.